Hi, I'm Dave, and today I'm here with Taylor in the studio, and we're going to be testing the HD video capabilities of the new Canon 5D Mark II. Now, before you start, make sure your memory card is compatible. We kind of had a problem in the past, and we tested it, and sure enough, it was the same problem with this. Certain combinations of readers and memory cards have had problems in the past too as far as reading the file system on it. So make sure everything works before you get started. Once we took it out of the camera and put it into the laptop, it came up as a drive as normal, uh, but then it was just a bunch of gibberish when we looked at the files on it and it was completely erased at that point. We had to reformat the card. Uh, then we put in a different card which was a Transcend 8 gig card and it worked just fine. So first we're just gonna hook up the 5D Mark II straight to a laptop just to make sure we don't have any other connectivity problems. Make sure it'll download images correctly. And I just want to take a few still images here, mainly just to look at the raw settings because this camera will mostly be used for just still frame stuff. The photographer, the actual video is just kind of a bonus of the camera. Um, we don't know how much that's actually going to be used. Photographers are really not too excited about the video part. That's just really a film guy thing. I mean, you know, now you got a still camera that shoots video. It's exciting for a uh, director of photography, but not so much for, for a photographer. They're actually a little bit disappointed in this camera because it doesn't have that many extra photo options. So I'm going to go ahead and get a shot of this geisha. I just chose this geisha statue because it has a not, lot of colors in it, so it's got some something vibrant. I'm gonna run back to the laptop and try to snap off a picture. A 21 megapixel picture is set up for raw. One weird thing I've learned about Photoshop, and um, there are settings to try to fix this, but it doesn't always work. Sometimes when you're viewing an image, it does look a bit blurry at certain um, zoom points. Um, don't exactly know why that happens, but it doesn't mean you took a blurry shot. <laughs> You can always zoom in really close and see, yes, this is in focus. Testing on our first macro focus, and I think it's uh, in this camera, it's one and a half feet for macro. Okay, I'm gonna go 22. I really like a real slow shutter because you can get everything in focus and it just looks crystal clear. All right, we are recording. Dolly down real slow. Some of the whites in here are just a bit uh, brighter than they were in the actual live view. When you stop it, you see a lot of comp like square compression, yeah. almost like a grid. When it's playing, it's not so bad. So now we're going to do a comparison to the Panasonic HPX200. We are rolling 1080 30p. I love the clarity of it. Yeah. But I, I, you're gonna have to, it's gonna be more careful body wise. A couple action shots to see what the difference is between the two cameras. Now this is really to show the colors, the color range of each one of these cameras. Um, a little red, a little yellow with a kind of Neutral sweater. Um, hey, sweetie, you got me five. Hi, these are for hey, you. Thanks. Now, if you slow them both down to about 10% and turn off the frame blending, you can really see a difference in the way it handles uh, camera movement. You can really see some of the vibrance and uh, contrast as well in some of these handheld shots. and. There's still something going on with the uh, auto iris or something related to it there. You can tell from this shot. You have auto iris off and it's still... It's doing something. I don't know if that's iris or if it's a white shift. Because I've had white shift problems with those other video cameras which I could never turn off. So overall it's uh, pretty good. It seems like uh, the blacks look pretty cool. Reds were a big problem. Um, we still need to do some outdoor testing. There's still a lot more testing to do. It's a photography camera. It's doing video. It's the first generation mm -hmm. one. And it actually looks pretty darn good. Yeah. I mean, the good thing is you're using, like, like we're using an L-series lens. That kind of lens on a video camera would cost $20,000.
That, True. In, in, in this world, it's only fifteen hundred dollars. It looks great. The clearing is fantastic. It's neat. It's something fun to play with. So, thanks for watching.